What really drives me as a scientist is the potential to make a difference, bringing together multiple fields that help us understand how the natural process of uh, you know, human health and human disease really works. We've discovered with the recent immunotherapies that the body's own immune system is really powerful. It has built-in machinery that's able to recognize abnormal cells, such as cancer cells. But we don't really know what happens when we have a dysfunctional response. Our work is really motivated by the fact that there's significant differences across patients in responding to immunotherapies. And uh, this led to the question, what if we look at the immune cells that are interfacing with the tumor? Are there significant differences among those across patients? Uh, fortunately, with recent uh, uh, genomic technologies, we're able to characterize immune populations at single cell resolution and put them in the context, the spatial context of the tissue as well. The problem, though, was that analyzing this data is really challenging. It's uh, complex, high-dimensional, uh, noisy data, and it's uh, hard to compare this data across patients. So uh, this is where uh, we bring in a lot of concepts from AI and machine learning to try to make sense of this data and find patterns even from small, limited cohorts of patients and try to learn about the underlying structure that gives rise to the response and resistance that we see in patients. Oftentimes, this kind of data-driven approach leads to hints and findings that are overlooked with more conventional and traditional approaches. Our work was the first that showed that immune populations, immune cells across breast cancer patients are also widely different. So once the immune cells interface with the tumor, they drastically transform. They increase in diversity of uh, cell states. And this differences across patients is important because it can help us design personalized immunotherapies tailored to the body's own immune system. Uh, but it can also help uh, in the long term, for example, to design cancer vaccines. Other questions that uh, we try to answer in our research are related to the very early stages of cancer initiation. Uh, how is the uh, ecosystem around uh, the very first tumor cell uh, changing? And can we uh, basically use that information to design strategies uh, to prevent uh, the initiation of cancer at the very early stages? I hope that we contribute to designing and developing newer forms of immunotherapies and treatments that are more effective uh, lead to longer-term remission and better patient care. I also hope that uh, the machine learning methods that we build, the computational approaches and frameworks, can also guide uh, you know, applications in other contexts, uh, other cancer types, other treatment scenarios. Uh, I think in the next decade, uh, we are going to see a lot of the frameworks that we're building in terms of genomic profiling, computational modeling, be brought to the clinic. And when a patient comes in, measure everything we, we want and we need about that tumor, about that patient specimen, uh, and use all of that information, digest it, find patterns, find the important uh, genes, markers, proteins, cells, and uh, use that to build a roadmap for treating the patient. That in a recent uh, fundraising event, uh, I got to actually meet some cancer survivors, and uh, it was it was an incredible experience just seeing you know that uh, our research has a, a potential that can impact uh, other people's lives, and uh, this is really a strong motive for all of us.